So my next question here is now the most prevalent is the state of Israel currently is going through sure. uh, a lot of attacks and it's still nearby the region. Um, can you elaborate uh, just on your terms, up to date, what information you've got right now as far as the state of Israel and the Palestine issue? Sure. Well, I mean, I, I have no inside information. I always tell that to everybody. I have no inside information. But uh, from my understanding of what's happening in Israel, and just basically what I've observed is uh, I will agree that there are times when Israel has uh, treated the Palestinian people unfairly or in a way that's been very extreme. And But however, uh, what Palestine... And Hamas and maybe some other countries like Syria and Lebanon, uh, Iran, uh, looks like what they are doing at this moment is that uh, they're trying to provoke some type of war. They launched over 5,000 missiles into Israel. Uh, they're also striking the city of Jerusalem. And, and from also my understanding is the Gaza-Israeli border has now under... Uh, Israel has lost control of the Israel-Gaza border. Uh, uh, some people have been kidnapped, children uh, and women. Uh, of course, if soldiers are kidnapped, uh, to me, that doesn't count. You're a soldier. You have to fight. So uh, if you're kidnapped, you weren't fighting or whatever. But when you have children and women kidnapped, that's a different story. So to me, that's a bigger issue is I see certain acts of terrorism. And I oppose that. Now, I understand that the people in Morocco and maybe lots of your audience, that they are in favor of Palestine. and They're not so, let's just say, friendly towards the state of Israel. And I can understand. However, I'm always a person who supports fairness and what's known as a just war. You as a nation state or you as a people if you're the one to do the first strike, then, you know, you should expect somebody to fight back. And if you complain, somebody fights back, then, well, it's your fault. You started the fight. But if you have been hit, if it's you who were the victim or targeted for an attack, then and the just war theory is, is that you have an obligation to strike back. So what I anticipate, and I'm sure the re even the Palestinians anticipate, is there's going to be a strong response from the Israeli side. It could be very epic, and it could be even more extreme than what the Palestinians did. However, this is a case where somebody hits and somebody's going to fight back in return. It could be a very ugly situation, and it would be very unfortunate. However, it's just a case of pa the Palestinians provoked Israel in this incident, and there's going to be a strong response, and there's going to be a war, and it's gonna it could last for some time, and it's going to be definitely a major story for the next could be for the next few months ahead. Well, thank you for that. I wanted to also talk about the politics surrounding uh, the actual issue between the state of Israel and the Palestine people. Let's talk about the, the normalization of Morocco and Israel days before this incident. Would you think that's a coincidence? Um, well, I mean, that's, that's a fair question to ask. And I will also say that Israel was definitely surprised by what happened. You know, it's sort of like um, if, let's say, if some of our viewers who are Christian, like I am, who've read the Bible, there is this thing about uh, when we read about the apocalypse, we know the end of the world is going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. There's going to be a time when the entire humanity gets wiped out. But as, a, as the Bible says, it comes like a thief in the night. You're not going to know when it will happen. It will happen when chances are you least expect it. What happened to Israel today is a perfect example of it. A, were not prepared. They got hit hard, and it's a lot because their defense was not as strong as it should have been. But what's done is done, okay? So the reason I mention that is I don't believe when Israel had the discussions with Morocco, 
that they were anticipating the Palestinians were going to attack them a few days later. However, let's also bring to your attention that there's also another article talking about how Morocco supports a strong Palestine in an independent Palestine. I can understand, and it's reasonable for Morocco to make that statement. But then I, when I look at the article, I see it's dated October 6th. Today is October 7th. Now remember, the Palestinians were the ones doing the attacking. They're going to know there's going to be a war. It's quite possible Morocco may have been informed before they issued this statement. I'm just, I'm not saying they did or they know, but it just, I'm just using some logic here. That's part of my job. I don't have to use logic to connect the dots. And I just find that type of timing much more suspicious than the timing of Israel and Morocco relations improving. But I don't think Morocco had also bad intentions when talking to Israel at that time. It's quite possible they may not have known about what was going to happen with the Palestinians until they had the meeting yesterday. Okay? So I also am not going to put any blame on Morocco on that issue, that maybe they had some hidden information. But I do find the meeting between the Palestinians and the Moroccans highly suspicious. But this is just sim simple logic I'm using. That's a very good point. I want to speak on, on you mentioned about um, the state of Israel being prepared. Now, on September 12th this year, there was an article that was released by The Guardian, and it mentioned okay. about U.S. agrees to release $6 billion in Iran funds as a part of a deal to free detained Americans. Shouldn't Israel, the state of Israel, been prepared? Well, part of the problem is, is they couldn't complain to the Americans. They couldn't stop the Americans from doing that. That is Biden's fault. And it, Netanyahu was not very happy with Biden. I found it really weird that Netanyahu was all eager to meet Biden at the United Nations, at the General Assembly, knowing that Biden was doing these type of activities and it was not being very trustworthy to the Israels. And as I said, I understand your viewers are not pro-Israel. And that's, you know, that's fine. But I happen to just think on logical frameworks. And I, what I do is a lot of times I have to enter the mindset of people to understand their decision-making process. Okay. So let's say if I'm thinking of, let's say I have to think about Israel's, I'm walking in their shoes. And suddenly I find out that Biden is being overly friendly to Iran. And he just gave Iran $6 billion. If I was Netanyahu, or if I was in, this, in the Israeli government, I would be very upset about that. Now, of course, at the same time, there is also an argument to be said that Iran was sort of being kind of persecuted and that they were being treated unfairly. And there are some arguments to that. However, it looks like it's very possible that once they received the $6 billion, they sent it to Hamas to prepare for the attacks. Okay. Now, I am very pro-peace. Okay. And this is why I'm not really even pro-Israel. Because I know at times Israel is the one instigating. But Iran, this is just, it just, all of this just seems like a very bad, dirty deal. And they trick Biden administration into giving them $6 billion, playing the victim card, and then using it for, looks like, to be terrorism. I, to me, I'm just a supporter of fairness. I, it's just not right. So Israel is going to respond in a very strong manner. And they, to, in my mind, I think they have every right to do so. So we've also engaged in conversation between the, US, the Ukrainian and, and Russian war, how it impacted the economy. Do sure. you believe that this local new war would also add more impediments to the economy? 
Well, it depends. I mean, obviously, if you're a defense contractor, you're going to benefit from more wars. However, there's also another argument going around, and it's becoming more spoken about, is that <coughs> the U.S., the U.K., the EU, NATO, they are running out of ammunition. They are running out of weapons. They sent all their weapons. I can't say all. That's an extreme hyperbole. But they sent loads and loads of weapons to Ukraine. Apparently, 100 billion U.S. dollars worth of weapons. 100 billion. Okay? So, and just think about 100 billion to, to understand why this is huge. A uh, hundred billion basically is a um, hundred billionaires. Okay, you have all these weapons, bullets, missiles, tanks, guns, getting sent to Ukraine, and it was like going into a rabbit hole, fighting the Russians. But that's all it was. It just goes to Ukraine, does not leave. Even if Ukraine, and then you would think that with $100 billion of weapons, how come Ukraine did not, was unable to chase out the Russians? With all those weapons. So I did some uh, questions. I did uh, speak to some people. And, you know, I'm not going to say who I spoke to, but I had some questions. Where did those weapons go? And from what I'm hearing, some of it, and a lot of it was going into the black market, being bought by the Russians. So the weapons that were getting sent into Ukraine were then resold, actually at a discount, because they got it for free, to the Russians. And then they were using it to kill the Ukrainians. And the Russians are going to return these weapons back. Okay? Now, I'm not saying this is happening all the time but it was a rumor I heard. And it sounds plausible when you really think about it, because if you send $100 billion worth of weapons, you would think that the Ukrainian army would be much more effective in chasing out the Russians, but they couldn't. So this sounds like a plausible explanation. So with that being said, what I'm getting at is you have huge loads and troves of weapons going into Ukraine. And so suddenly there's going to be this new war in Israel and it's very possible that the people in Palestine, and when they talk to other countries, they said, look, America has admitted they're running out of ammunition. Maybe this is the right time to strike. Now, as I said, I'm just using logic. I'm not quoting from any special source or anybody I know. I'm just using some logic. And if you find out the U.S. is running out of ammunition and Israel is a strong partner of the U.S., and they need the U.S. to survive, just like Ukraine needs the U.S. to survive. It is quite possible they just saw the timing and said, if there's any time to strike Israel, the time is now. 